broad daylight like it was in the old days. All right. We're going to switch gears, man. We're going to talk about <laughs> why I called you, man. And uh, uh, you've met Malcolm X before, yeah? A few times, right? On the end. On the end. I was, I was very young on, on the end. On the end. What years would you say? I would say around 64 uh, on the end because I didn't, I wasn't, I was in back then, but I wasn't moving and shaking like I was after he passed. Mm. I wasn't big in Philadelphia in the streets. I wasn't big in the mass shit and, and, and known then at, at the temple, temple number 12, led by the late minister Jeremiah Chai, he must be Okay. How old were you in 1964? Jesus Christ, 64. I was like 20, 20, 21, 22. Oh, okay, 21. I'm, I'm 75 now. Yeah, so, okay. I'll, the, the, uh, the listeners will do the math. And and how did you meet him? Well, you got to remember Malcolm opened number 12, but I wasn't in. See, when Malcolm was the minister in 12, I was starts not. Garvey night like his parents were. Mm. I didn't come in to the mid-60s. I came, I took a stand. I took a stand under Minister Jeremiah. I knew about the teaching, but because I always, because I came, when I came to Philly, I came from Minister Jeremiah's neighborhood, 26 in Oxford. Mm. That was my neighborhood because the first mass year that Malcolm opened was at 26 in Bailey, at Bailey and Columbia Avenue, which is known now as to be more. When they was on top of the bakery, and then after Malcolm left, when then the Imam came, the Imam, the lady Imam, wealthy Muhammad, may Allah rest in peace, Bismillah, Allah, 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 well, wait, wait. First, can you recount your engagements? Do you remember how was the interaction between you and Malcolm? Well, I shook his hand a few times, but wasn't really because at that time you weren't a top official. You couldn't get to the minister like you wanted to. I couldn't got get that. to him like I got the minister Jeremiah and to Mike's father-in-law, Imam Shamsuddin, like, like now. I can then now I can still pick up the phone and call Mike Tyson follow Imam Shamsuddin Ali because mm -hmm. he was my captain. I became captain on the end. Got that. So what? Do I became you... a business captain, not a security captain. I was a business captain okay. for the Akbar Juice and the Beans. I was a business captain and the Muhammad speech. Gotcha. Because I want people to know I was never a security captain, and in number two, I was a business captain. Mm -hmm. I have to, had access to the minister and all, and I was a business captain. Mm. But, but but I was groomed by Mike Tyson's father-in-law, Imam Shamsuddin Ali. Mm. He was known that time as Captain Clarence. Mm. So 1964 is a great year. Can you, in, in your words, describe the relationship between Malcolm and the Nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad and so on and so forth? And if, if you want to add in Louis Farrakhan as well. Let me say this, and I'm standing on this, allowed to best of knowing, best of playing. Mm -hmm. I believe Malcolm was tricked. I believe that the high echelon, that red bastard who's still alive today at 92 years old, John Ali put him in the trick bag. Because when, when you watch all the tapes, all the footage, Malcolm, not intentionally, and I think his daughters are standing with me on this, had outshined the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You got to remember then when Malcolm was leaving, the old man was like 65 or 66 then because he only, he, he, he only lived like 10 more years. Uh, 10 years after Malcolm. So when the old man died, he was like 77, 78, 1975. I believe in my heart, and I'm going to stand on what I know, not what I heard, because I come from the corners. I stand on what is right. I stand on the son of the prophet, me peace be upon him. I believe the high echelon, the John Ali, 
and Elijah Muhammad Jr. came in here and stirred them brothers up. I mean, the old man wasn't, wasn't no angel. None of us are no angels. But Malcolm was ahead of his time. And I believe, and, and I'm going to say this, and I think the minister number 25, James Shabazz, played a very part in this. I don't think that, and not saying this because I love the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I think they used Farrakhan of his brash talk and his boastment to put it out there and it came and it, and it came back to haunt Farrakhan. But I don't think his attention, because I know from what, what my father, who was a lieutenant at that time, he loved Brother Malcolm. But sometimes people can create a climax where you you put out that a brother is doing something, all the, the word, all oh, Malcolm trying to take over the nation, Malcolm trying to take over the nation. Malcolm was the nation. Nobody want to listen to the old man. The old man, Malcolm was out there on the front line. The old man was the boss and the leader, but Malcolm was on the front line. The old man wasn't in the Harlem every week on the on a soapbox. The, the old man wasn't running around the country. The old man didn't go down there and meet with the Ku Klux Klan, Jeremiah Shabazz and Brother Malcolm. So Malcolm was the face of the nation. See, sometimes when you become the superstar, the people around you don't want you there because you can't do your little devious work because he seen you. See what I'm saying? And, and, and what I'm saying is that they put the highest alarm to the daughters and all them, they put him, they put brother brother Malcolm in a, in, in, a, in a Mississippi course. Because they know if the old man gets sick of pass at that time, but the law spared him 10 more years, they know when Malcolm gonna take over. See what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, you got guys down there, and and and, and you take Yusuf Shaw, his captain. Cold, my brother, but he was a cold blood sucker. You talk bad about Malcolm, and you wind up serving poke chops as Don King Chopper. Negro, you ain't no chopper. You the Negro. But as I'm concerned, I love you, the chop. But you, then you on your deathbed, you ask a lot of forgiveness, but you still say Malcolm was a Benedict Arnold. Malcolm was your brother. He got you out the trash can out there on Detroit on Russell on Russell Avenue, out there in Black Bottom, Detroit. Bring you to New York, make you a captain, but you cross them because you don't realize Muhammad's captain. Bro, come on, man. We got to stand on what is right. And I think they all put Malcolm in the cross. Mm. And much as I love Ali, and I was with Ali for 30 years, Ali said himself, I'm sorry I turned my back on him. So we got to understand Malcolm was the face, bro. And he was getting ready to make a move. When he made that move, and and start reading the how deep the Quran and the Bible for what it was and for what it is, good books, all three of them, then he understands. We all have faults. There's no color barren in Islam. There shouldn't be no color barren in no religion. Whoever you serve, serve your bishop brother. And when Malcolm came out of them streets and out of that prison in Massachusetts, he lived upright to the best of his ability. And the old man, and, and, and most surely I love the honorable Elijah Muhammad. But you have to stand on what is right. And I think, and Malcolm became a modern human being and a modern citizen and the rest of them guys, and they, they were snakes. You gotta remember, all, all this father was former drug dealer, pimps, hoes, and players. Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I give him credit, he cleaned a lot of us up. But look what happened when the imam came in and disbanded everything. A lot of them went back to the streets. A lot of sisters didn't have no kids. A lot of, I know a lot of sisters now, she didn't have no kids. That's 1975, now she got 10. So, so when you look at it, Malcolm stood on the Sunnah. So now the Prophet Muhammad, be peace be upon him and all his companions. I mean, so what I'm saying is that Malcolm served the purpose, brothers. And, and, and I believe in my heart that, that it, the high echelon, the John Lee, the Elijah Jr., they put him in the cross. And, and the only one, the imam, Herbert didn't have much to say because Herbert was too busy to robbing Muhammad Ali. Herbert, Herbert was hustling. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, back then, 
see, the people don't know the history. Akbar, not Akbar, Nathaniel, he was married to a white girl in Kansas City selling dope. So he wasn't really perfect. Don't like Muhammad's children wasn't perfect. Mm. So I'm, I, I mean, the minister, we thank a lot for him. He serves the purpose. They use the minister. The dog Malcolm out. They used the minister because the minister was blind because his loyalty was to the Alam Elijah Muhammad. Like a father figure tell me, the guys, sometimes your father ain't always right. Sometimes your mother ain't always right. So when you get blind by something, you tend to say something against someone, it's really not true because your loyalty to that person. And I think that's what happened in the case of the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. Mm. What do you make of the, 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 the claims that, that Malcolm said about Elijah Muhammad and how it impacted, how, it, how that impacted the energy, like about the women, the underage girls and all that? Well, let me say this. Malcolm was only saying what the Quran said. And what the Hadith and the Bible said, I know you got to, something, you speak of it, you speak on it. And Malcolm wrestled with it, but then show you their take on it. They tried to take Malcolm to the Bible and show him where Joe did this and where, and where Saul did this and all that, but that don't justify. See, I can't speak on the relationship because at that time, brother, I wasn't, part of the high echelon for what I understand and what I was told from the use of Shaw when once I became captain and a moving shaker in 12 with a lot of the old soldiers that I mean I mean a lot of them sisters spoke on it themselves but at that time we thought Elijah Muhammad was was the mission of God we didn't know no better it really Elijah tricked us bro we had Bank robbers, we robbing banks, sending money to Chicago. They living good. We had a coat. The sisters couldn't wear no fur coats, no fur coats, no jewelry. But his daughters and them were wearing fur coats. I remember a situation. I'm telling you, we we'll move on. My wife, I don't know if you remember a fighter that fought Tommy Hearn by the name of James Shula and went home and got killed on the bike back in the day. And she told, she told Elijah Jr. We went to save this day. Right before the old man died, she said, why you got on fur coat? Says, you know you got a lot of fur coat. She said, your sister got on fur coat. She, he said, well, they don't like mom. She said, she told him, your sister bleed every month like I do. So they can wear fur coat. I wear one. And you know, it was so much stigma around then. And Malcolm was trying to get rid of all that stigma. When the royal family, what they wanted to call itself, wasn't no better than any other family that was a member of the Nation of Islam. And, 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 and a lot of them didn't want Malcolm to really clean it up the way it was supposed to be. And that's why, you know, you create a lot of complex, a lot of them brothers that went at him, a lot of them brothers, I, I mean, was going at him. Then you got your captain, you get back out, they're blowing your house. But the man was tired, bro. Mm -hmm. The man was tired. And they put him in a trick bag. As far as I can see, all the investigations I did as a captain and as of today, I stand on what I believe. I don't care about none of them. Mm. But they know I come from the street. They know I'll play with them things if I help. <laughs> well, let me ask you one more question. I'll hand it over to DB. What do you mean mm -hmm. uh, when you said um, you thought he was the messenger of God? I, I'm 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 paraphrasing what you said. So correct my correct my wording. And you said okay. that that uh, okay. he tricked y'all. Yeah. He tricked you. You know what? Farad Muhammad King. See, in those days, we thought that God came in person as Master Farad Muhammad. Now we know better. And Elijah tricked us that about the mother plane, the mother ship, star, moon, sun, sun. We all going on the mother plane and, 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 and that heaven is down here on them. Elijah really tricked us. But, he, but one thing I give Elijah, Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him and grant him for his sins, I mean, and that he said, I didn't come to teach Islam. I come to clean you up. He never taught us Islam when a lot of imams said he taught shirt. He didn't teach Islam, so how can you teach shirt? 
show to sell all these men, Marad, Marad, and Dr. Wild, all them guys in Brooklyn, and, 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 and all them guys up there on 16th Street. I don't pay them guys no attention because they don't know no better. See, you, 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 you can't talk that the man taught something when he didn't, when he didn't teach nothing. He just said, I come to clean you up. And when I say that he said he was the message of God, the last message of all the prophets came from Adam to Muhammad. Not Elijah, my Adam to Muhammad ibn Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. May Allah be pleased with him and grant Granted in paradise. And what I mean, Farad had us believing that Elijah was the last messenger of God, which he wasn't. Elijah was a servant of God, but he wasn't a messenger of God. He wasn't the last messenger. The last messenger was Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon you. D-D. So oh, Elijah, when I say he tricked us, he had us believing that he was the messenger of God, but he wasn't the messenger, he just was a servant, like a lot of us are in our own way. DB? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, a lot of the younger generations get our information from books, documentaries, and movies. But since you have firsthand knowledge after watching the movie X, because that's where the majority of people get their information or uh, like the visual of Malcolm X, uh, how accurate or inaccurate do you think that movie was? Well, it was a lot of accuracy accurate in it, but I think Hollywood didn't let Spike do what he really wanted to do. Mm. In my opinion, from my contacts out there in Hollywood and have an interaction with Denzel Washington through the late boxing promoter Butch Lewis, who was my cousin and my friend, uh, uh, from Denzel was a couple of times, you know, and it was a lot of said because they didn't consult the, the minister uh, they consulted Malcolm's captain. He wasn't no help. And I mean, uh, uh, at that time, the movie, the movie woke up a lot of eyes to what who Malcolm really was, to what the light the nation had put on who he wasn't. The movie put on the light what he really was and what he meant to the nation of Islam at that time. Thanks to a lot. The movie served a purpose. It served a lot. It had a lot of good in it. And it had a lot of misinformation in it, but most of all, the movie was, I would say, seventy. I would say seventy percent accurate, because Spike didn't have. See, uh, you got to remember, a lot of the soldiers that was also that was there, they didn't want to speak on it because they was with the minister, and 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 and, and, and from from just out of Spike's own mouth to me, and, and Butch Lewis that he didn't. He, he visited the minister, but he didn't really got the minister take on it like he thought he should have at that time. This is what would really come out of Spike's mouth to me and Butch Lewis, the late Butch Lewis, of Butch Lewis production. So I, 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 I would say anywhere from 65% accurate. I would stick more on 65%. So what are, uh, what are, what is or are the scenes that you saw in the movie that doesn't make the movie one hundred percent accurate. Okay, when when you when you look at the part of the movie where Ali Sean is back over the east, it didn't go down that way. I talked to Ali about it when I was in when I was up at the camp because because because. After Malcolm passed a few years later, you got to remember Ali moved to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which came up under Temple Number Twelve. At that time, I was I was a business captain, so I had access to Ali and all Kwawi, Saad, Muhammad, Eddie Mustafa, who are out there in Vegas now, great renowned trainer, former champ of the world. And, and Ali used to tell us at the camp, he said, "Man, I made a mistake by turning my back on Malcolm, and and they want to give Captain Sam." They call him The Rock down there at Temple Number 29 in Miami for bringing Ali in. But they got to remember, Ali heard Malcolm in New York <laughs> when he fought long, long before he, he fought listening. He had already heard Malcolm speak in New York. So you can't say, say that Captain Sam brought him in when he done, when he done been to the Shabbat restaurant right there on the corner of the bank at, on 116th Street in the barbershop shop in 1961-62. So you can't say that Captain Sam, Captain Sam brought him in. 
got to say that Malcolm laid the groundwork because he was coming back and forth to New York with Angelo Dundee. And, and heard the teaching. He heard the teaching from Malcolm. He might have took a stand in Miami, but he got the teaching from, from, from Brother Malcolm. So that part was in Akron. And then the other part where he, he said the way he shined his back on turning his back on Malcolm, that wasn't really true. Ali explained how it went down. So so when you got people that didn't 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 really give it to him. See, Ali didn't really say nothing because Ali wouldn't talk. Ali couldn't, by the time the movie came, Ali couldn't have talk. So they was going by what people that was around Ali and what Yusuf Shaw said, and Yusuf Shaw had already turned his back on him, so you're going you gonna to make things look like it's true when it wasn't really true. Because we know by the time the movie come, Ali couldn't speak above a whistle of a, 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 a uh, 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 due to the parking, but we thank a lot. We had it for 24 years after the movie. That's my take on that. And 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 and, and the other part, how it went down. I mean, I mean, all this, you know, all the crazy stuff with listen and all that. They didn't really have a lot of that stuff after. And that's in my opinion. What I seen, what what I know, and what I evaluate, and what I investigated when I became in captain. Understood. What's your relationship like with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan now? I love him. That's my man. I don't get to see him much. I heard the minister, the minister stick. And I used to keep in contact when Ben Chambers was with him. Ben Chambers was my guy. He's my guy. You know, every chance, every time he come around, I come around, he look at me and say, oh, brother, Captain, you come to shake me down. I said, no, brother, I love you, brother. And, 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 and I have nothing against him. And I'm glad him and Betty made a step toward reconciliation. I'm glad he sat down with a toddler, maybe not come out of but we pray a lot that it was a step made because Farrakhan was put in the mix of all this here. He was put in the mix thanks to Jagger Hoover and that rat bastard Don Ali who's still alive. See, the problem I have with that, See, you guys, this, I'm going to tell you public knowledge. You guys are broadcasting video personnel. Y'all can look this up as public knowledge. Yusuf Shaw knew in 1959, early 60s, that John Ali was a federal informant for Jekahua. He knew this because Yusuf Shaw's two brother in laws was a sergeant lieutenant in my district in Philadelphia, in my neighborhood, at the 17th district, at 22nd, uh, 17th of Montgomery. So he knew this. Yusuf Shaw had already got word from his brother-in-law because John Ali, wife, sister Sylvia, who, did, who just returned to Allah last year, may Allah be pleased with the Grand Parasites, I mean, had informed Malcolm's captain that he was a federal informant with Yekahuka. So, so you know this, and you still got this guy at the National Secretary? Come on, man. They, all this was to get rid of Malcolm. They didn't want Malcolm to ride. They knew if the old man got sick from the Brown Carters and passed at that time, Malcolm would take the him, take the him, and they would have hell. Do you think yeah. that? Oh, go ahead, DB. No, I was just going to ask. Did you have any spending any significant time with Doctor uh, Khalid Abdul Muhammad? Doctor Khalid Abdul Muhammad, good brother. I, I spoke with him a couple of times. I, you know, he's a good brother. He served a purpose. He, he served with whatever Minister Perricone had him doing. I don't know if he would have been a minister in my time. I don't know if he would have been one of the Honorable, Honorable Elijah Muhammad's choice or a student minister under the minister Jeremiah or Mike Tyson, father-in-law, Imam Chamsuddin Ali. I don't know. The brother was well, elegant, well-spoken. All I can say I liked him better when he started the new Black Panther Party. I liked him better because he had a free range. When you got to take orders from Chicago, when you the head of your own new organization or old organization, you can kind of you can kind of do and say what you want to say under the Freedom of Speech Act, under the Constitution. It don't always work out that way. But I I think he was a better when he parted ways, I don't know why, and it's none of my business, why he left him, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. 
But when he branched out and became the Black Panther Party, you see he went down there and checked him when that brother got dragged down there, that brother James Bird down there. I guess it was Tyler, Texas, somewhere down in there. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I mean, he was very active. And when he's doing his own thing in, in New York with the Black Panther Party, he was very active. Him and, him and that brother, the lawyer, Shabazz, the, the, the Zulu brother, you, you, you know, they served the purpose. And I like the, the late brother Khalid Muhammad, me a lot of grand parents, that's not me. So That's my take on I, I, didn't, I didn't really know him that well. I, I met him through Reverend Sharpton, with my dear friend, the Reverend Al Sharpton. You know, he was with us with Don King. So, you know, I met him a few times. And, and, and you know, we had a couple of conversations, but I didn't really know him like I knew Minister Jeremiah James Shabazz, who was the head of number 25 at the time of Malcolm Assassinate. I knew them brothers real well. Right, but you said you didn't think he'd be a minister in your time because of his vibrance and his fire, and well, and he had his report to Chicago. See, you know, Khalid, Khalid was a type of brother. He was something like Malcolm. You couldn't tie his hands. Right, and and if you tie his hands, there was a conflict. That was a conflict, but he didn't let the conflict between him and the minister, the Honorable Lord, Minister Louis Farrakhan, my dear brother, may Allah grant him peace and may Allah grant him good health. Uh, he didn't let the critics and the wannabes create the disturbance like they created between the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and, and Brother Malcolm. Khalid took his weapon, left and did his own thing. He didn't hang around he wrote a letter waiting for his meeting for the honor of Minister Louis Farrakhan and number 10. So he went to start his own thing like Malcolm did. But he didn't feed in to all the critics and all the wannabes that was around the minister. He said, I'll leave. Y'all do what you want to do. I'm going to do my thing. You, you mentioned, um, I, okay, no, before we let's, let's stay on in this. Uh, Louis Farrakhan, do you think that he was conflicted, and do you think that uh, if if you use the word silence, do you think like like Martin Luther King says, silence is a sin as it pertains to him being conflicted and um, what Elijah Muhammad is doing versus what uh, Malcolm X is doing? Well, what I will say. The Honorable Minister Louis Perkins, we all have sharp comments to Almighty God a lot. I will say he is a champion for our people. Mm-hmm. He stands with our people. We may not like how he stands, but he stands for our people, bam, bang, bang, and Native Americans. He stands for our people. He stands on what he believes, and he stands on what he thinks, that, on the Quran, the Hadith, the Bible, and the Sunnah of the Prophet. May peace be upon the Prophet and his, all his companions, I mean. So, so you got to understand, no imam, no minister that was, came up with Farrakhan, uh, alone or uh, after Farrakhan, will bring together a million black men on the national ball. Farrakhan has that gift. If there's a beef between the rappers or NBA players or football players, they don't call no imam, they call the minister. These kids, these this hip hop culture, they are they are attempt to listen to the minister. The blood, the crypt, the renegade Muslims, they are listening to the minister. Can no imam right. bring together the people like the minister? Right. God have blessed them with that, and you can't take them with nobody's blessing. In my opinion, do you? I don't always agree with the minister. Mm-hmm. The minister is still saying he's still saying. We thank a lot, a lot for Master Farad Muhammad. I don't believe that. But some of the things he said on the social economic and the women's of North America and with Hampton, but sure, I agree with him on certain things. I don't always agree with the minister. And I love the minister, but I don't always agree with him. I stand on what is right. I stand on the Quran and the Sunnah and the Torah and the Bible and what is right. A lot of the things he said I don't agree with. A lot of the things he said I do agree with. But I'm I'm wise enough to know what to stand on and what not to stand on. 
He serves a purpose. The minister serves a purpose. He gets a lot of stuff done. He's a champion for our people. A lot of people may think he's not a champion, but he is. Is this, you don't want to comment on the silence part? I have never known him to be silent. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I was I was making reference to because Elijah Muhammad Jr., you got Elijah Muhammad Jr., you got you, you got the cap. I, I'm not sure the, the, the captain at Moss 25, James Shabazz. Uh, no, James Shabazz wasn't the captain. Okay. James Shabazz was the minister. Yeah, yeah, but he did time with Elijah Muhammad. In prison, so they were good friends. So so the, the reason In why, Lamb prison. Yeah, so the But see, see, let me give you a little history on that. Thank you. James Shabazz wasn't the first minister at 25. 25, Abdul Kareem, they had a council. So Malcolm came over and told them they couldn't have no council. So 25, being the gangster renegade that they are, Mustafa and all of them, they said, man, get out of here. Did, did Elijah say that? So Malcolm wrote the honor of Elijah Muhammad. He said, y'all pick a minister amongst y'all. But them guys was in the streets doing their thing, doing whatever they was doing that between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, listen, so Elijah Muhammad said, I've got the perfect guy. I'll send him to be your minister. James Shabazz came in and let the country boy that he was and straightened it out and, uh, and put all them brothers out. So, so when, when you look at it, Yusuf Shaw and Farrakhan were strange to me. Their loyalty was to Elijah. Those were the easy, those were Elijah's pick. Mm -hmm. Elijah, even though Malcolm put him in Boston, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad they put him in Boston. It's not like Malcolm put the Minister Farrakhan in number 11 in Boston. He was told to put him there. And he was told to make use of Shaw the chaplain. But Malcolm, when Malcolm was the census minister as he came home out there in number one uh, 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 under Brother Lehman, Mr. Lehman, Malcolm come into New York. Malcolm didn't right come into New York. Malcolm was signed into Boston, then Connecticut, then to Philadelphia, then into New York. Malcolm, a lot of people think he just came to New York straight. No, no. Went to Boston, went to Boston, Connecticut, and started number 11 in Boston, number 13. Then he opened the doors first in number, number, for number 12, but he wasn't a minister in number 12. He was the visiting minister, number 12, and Jeremiah became the minister. And then that's how it was. When you say silent, we will sometimes loyalty or make you silent. Sometimes you got a father, you don't want to go against your father, you just don't say nothing. And, 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 and Dr. King could be right in certain situations. In certain situations, I wouldn't agree with Dr. King. In this situation, I, I, I tend to don't want to agree with it. Mm, okay. but, but the minister has been so vocal over these last last years, uh, 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 talking about talking about 36 years after Elijah's death and 56 years, 51 years after Malcolm's death, 56 years after Malcolm's death, so so he might have been silent at the time, but now he's considered as a champion for our people. And, 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 and at that time, I would have said Dr. King was right. Okay, D.B.? Yeah, I was I was actually going to talk about something today. The minister had a public address for Savior's Day uh, this afternoon. Did you get a chance to hear it and tune in? No, I didn't get the chance. I, I usually watch it a week or two after. after. Cause you know I'm doing other things, trying to promote my book, trying to work with you guys, this guy, that guy, David, this guy. So, so you know, I get to the minister speak. I usually I usually do it the first week of March and sit back. And, me and my girl, and, and, and here with my good brother out there in Chicago, by the way, of the Bronx, teaching on. You know, I always get to him. Why do you think um, Ali said his biggest mistake was was uh, um, turning his back on um, uh, Malcolm X? Let me tell you what. See, they tricked Ali too, tricked all of us. See, first of all, when I came in, it wasn't no sport and play. The brothers couldn't. If you played ball in school, you want to go with, with, your, with some of the brothers and do some pickup games, basketball, football game on a Saturday afternoon with your young son or your nephew. That wasn't allowed. Ali was assessing because Ali was bringing in millions, millions, millions of dollars. And plus, Herb Muhammad 
was his manager, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Jabba. He was no good. I love Brother Herbert, but Jabba was no damn good. He got paid 33% for doing nothing. Ali promoted himself. Mm. So why did he... So you're saying... But you got to remember, Ali got put out. Yeah. Ali got... Ali got put out. So, so, and, and that's another part of me I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. I was there at the camp. We was at the camp. I, matter of fact, we were getting ready for Jerry Corey because the brothers down there, Lee Ward and the brothers down there in, in Atlanta with Andy Young and Junior Bond and them, they got him his license. It's that old government say, let that old Negro come down here and put some money in, in, in Georgia. I'm okay. He, he, uh, Lester Mallock and all of them, they took flight from it, from them clans down there. But he said, we'll get this money because we know he's going to bring in all the players and all the stars. So what happened was in that part in the movie, when Herbert came in and said, oh, my father, he said, you mean your father? Say, what well, Ali say, I'm always a Muslim. They, see, when, when, when the suspension came, it wasn't no money coming in from Ali. It wasn't no prestige coming in with, with Ali. So Ali said to us at the camp, Aaron Snowwell, who was around doing the Jack Johnson thing today, he'll tell you. And a lot of brothers that was up at the camp, he had the Mustafa tell you. 1972. was at the camp. Him and Tim Winston was at the camp at that time when Ali said it. He said, brother, I made a mistake, but by shining that brother, listen, listen, listen to the pictures in Chicago. Because then Yusuf Shaw got in his ear, then, then the rock that just died, Crazy Captain Sam, I call him Crazy Captain Sam. He couldn't stand me. And I said, listen, I'm gonna crack your head with that thing. I ain't gonna play with y'all. And you got to see, if you look at the history, they feared Temple Number 12 and 25. 12, they feared Mr. Mr. Jeremiah was most, one of the most coldest ministers that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had. But getting back to Ali, see, you notice when Ali had all, the, all number 12 around him, and you look at Michael Spinks, Michael Spinks had all number 25 around him because Bush Lewis, being from Philadelphia, but Bush Lewis' loyalty was to, to temple number 25, Brother Ali Muhammad and all of them, Ali Muhammad, Mustafa Bradley and all of them, who, who led, pulled the shot down. Those were Butch's guys. But, but Butch was from Philadelphia, like, just like me from Philadelphia, by the, way of, by the way of Alabama and Texas. I'm originally from Texas and Alabama. I'm born in Texas, I grew up in Alabama by the way of Philadelphia. So you got to look at the, the, the forces. Malcolm had New York, Farrakhan had Boston, James had 25, and Jeremiah had the top of the clock, number 12. Arm Elijah Muhammad said, so go to the clock, and so go New York, so go to the world, because New York is, is the centerpiece, and 12 is the top of the clock. And 25 is the cornerstone, because you got two on one corner, and you got five on one corner, and you got and you got number six, which was in Baltimore, but no hell raiser. But number six was, was in Baltimore. Okay. So Ali regret that move, and he regret with a lot of moves. But you see, until he died, he looked out for Malcolm's children. And you see, when he passed, Atala was right there saying her words at his dinner. The world saw it. So if, if she thought, he, she really hurt her father, she wouldn't have been there. Mm, got it. Where did the, where did the money go? The nation is on. Bruh, I wish I know all the, all the money I gave. I could be eating $2. I wouldn't have to be getting $2 for you and your partner. I wish I know all the money I get in the two poor chatty. Yeah, I guess it went on the fur coat that is going on the mystery. I don't know. I wish I could find out. I'll send my squad to get it back. So but, but it, 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 nobody knows. But what happened was a lot of people left when the, like a lot of the street guys, the money stopped. Imam Wabdi Muhammad came up, came in and cleaned up everything. He said, listen, he sat me down and got me, me invited. I didn't speak to, 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 to Imam Wabdi Muhammad to about two years before he died. That's because I was, I was in Newark. He was at one place and, fell, and the minister was at another place. So, so I walked in the hotel and Amir Muhammad, Brother Ali Muhammad, 
who runs me a school over there in Newark, who one of the old soldiers under Minister James, son said, come on, brother, you got to go hug, hug, hug the imam, man. You got to let bygone be by. The imam got me indicted because he said I was a soldier artist, I was a black mafia gangster when he shot all us down in Philadelphia. He shot Jeremiah all us down, and he shot us in New York and brought the minister to Chicago. That's how the minister got to Chicago. We came into New York. He just landed in number 12 and put new ministers and new captains in there and, and brought us into New York. That's how we got to New York and New Jersey because he, man, when he just landed the FOI in 1976, when he came to up and said, we make the world November 76, he said, I'm sent down Captain Leon Muhammad, the business captain. I'm sitting and I'm bringing Mr. Jeremiah to New York. But Jeremiah brought me to New York with him because I was his captain. So that's how everything got screwed up. And then because when he just managed everything, we just left and went back with Ali permanently. Because if you look at the table in New Orleans and Vegas, when Ali fought Leon both times, you, you see me and Jeremiah in the middle of the ring. Me and Minister Jeremiah. Where was the money supposed to go? Like, where, where, where when you were sending we the money? We had something. We had something that called Number Two Poor Charity. We bought a lot of farms and stuff. We bought the plane for the Alaihi Muhammad. We were supposed to build a black bank, which never occurred. In and when the Imam come in, and then when he passed, all the money that was left, when the Estuary had all them kids and all them women filing for, for this for their children. And, 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 and a lot of went to his children. A lot went to his addition children because the imam said, I ain't giving the younger, the, the younger children that he led had by them secretaries. The imam said, I'm going to take care of them. But them grown ones, they got to go get their own. He said, listen, ain't no more this. He told his sister, all them, y'all got to go get jobs now. Mm. So the imam really cleaned it up. He said, we ain't doing what my father did. I'm cleaning this up. Y'all got to go get jobs. He said, my sister, Lottie and Elsa had to go get a job. And the Supreme Captain Raymond Sharif, when he died, he was driving a cab. Mm. See, Lottie, Lottie and Akbar, all, all, all of them had college degrees because Lottie Muhammad, he sent them to school in Cairo and in Egypt. So mm. they was educated. They found it was just a renegade down there in Kansas City, <laughs> the big dope boy down there in Kansas City, Brother Nathaniel. Mm. May Allah be pleased with him. Yeah, I uh, uh, my final question on 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 that part. In 2021, they would say like, um, th th they would use the term like uh, uh like those pastors of of big churches or scams or something like that. How would you categorize like you giving money, giving money and, and things not materializing? Well, today. I wouldn't get no money because I ain't got nothing to give them no way. Mega church, but, mega churches. I'm sorry, that's the term. Mega churches. Okay. Would you call the nation well, Islam a mega church, or would you call it like a scam because it never materialized? Well, it can call it a scam because because we had two or three hundred thousand acre of land. We had a lot of the bad stake and take. We had a lot of the stake and take on the truck. We had a lot of bakery. We had a lot of furniture stores. You can't say it was really a scam. But what was left, it wasn't materialized for the bank. I see a lot of stuff materialized, but the only thing I didn't materialize, the bank and the nursing school for the sister. That's the only thing I see that materialized because the money that was asked over that, uh, 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 the man wound up giving to his younger brothers and sisters that was proven to be that most out of the large Muhammad uh, uh, seed. Mm. So he did do good with it. So they did do good he, with the he money. He did good. A lot was did good of it. But what was left that was supposed to come from the bank and, 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 and the college for nursing, for the sisters that want to get into nursing uh -huh. and the brothers that want to get into nursing and get into x-ray protection nature, that from what I've seen and what I know, that did materialize. Uh -huh. But all the farms and stuff we had, the man okay. sold them and, and Minister Louis Farrakhan went and bought them back. After he left and started the nation back, he went and bought all the farms and stuff back. Beautiful. Uh, my final question on this. <laughs> I said that the last question. How no problem, uh, how um how much of an influence did did Moss number 25 play? And do you believe that William Bradley was the gunman of the of this of the one with the shotgun? Let me say this. A lot of them brothers are close friend of mine in 25. I don't know. Okay, brother. 
I don't know, but 25 was less. But I do know, and I stand on this, James Shabazz hated Malcolm. You heard his statement. You hated his stuff. He said if he would have met with death, James Shabazz had his own mouth, he would have, he would have met with death or going to meet with death. James Shabazz said it. I didn't say it. You can pay the tape from 1963 to vote. James Shabazz said it. I didn't say it. So, so 25 played a role, but I don't know what role. All I know is that we didn't play a role couple number 12. No, number, number 12. I'm worried about 12. What 25 do, they have to pay the price for that on the dead young account. Okay. DB? Yeah, I was just gonna I was gonna comment on something that you said though. Uh definitely not a scam. I think with uh with the land, the farming, the FOI training, the MGT and GCC programs, so the the money is definitely going somewhere. Um but uh for Brother Leon, what are your thoughts on uh the honorable Silas Muhammad and uh why did he leave Chicago if you know anything about that? Silas and Jam Muhammad. <laughs> Two comical brothers. I love Solomon. Solomon like Khalid. You couldn't tie. You couldn't tie here. Solomon was funny. I love Solomon. So Solomon was one of them guys. He was like class thirteen. You ain't gonna tie my hand. I'm gonna tell it like it is. So Solomon, Solomon felt that he should have been the one. But Solomon, oh, see, Solomon was always in the background. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad loves him, but he loved it fair con, Jeremiah. You know, he loved it fair con and Malcolm and James Shabazz. See, he respected Jeremiah because you know Jeremiah was a gangster. He didn't play them games. Play with Jeremiah, them brothers out of 12 of them come to you. So they, it was a different. So you had the four big heads at that, at that time. You had James Shabazz in 25. You had Malcolm in New York. You had Farrakhan in Boston. And you had Jeremiah in Philadelphia. But Jeremiah was the most fortunate one. Malcolm was doing his thing. He came into his own. But Jeremiah let you know, you play with me, I'm going to crack in your head. I ain't going to call Chicago. I'm going to crack your damn head. That's the way that he had them kind of soldiers. James Shabazz hated Malcolm so because he didn't have the charisma Malcolm, so see, Farrakhan had the charisma. Mm. Farrakhan was waiting in the wing. Malcolm groomed him. They were grooming Farrakhan. But some kind of way to sidetrack, I think Silas was good in the first resurrection. We called it the first. Silas was good, but Silas wasn't part of that big four. And I think he felt some kind of way as, as well as damn Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's brother in my opinion. And I think, who who knows? But no one can do what Farrakhan have done since 1978 as a Tampa people. I don't think Silas could have did the Million Man Nah, the uh, uh, the anniversary of the 20 Million Man March, uh, or whatever. I don't think Farrakhan have championed on certain issues, economic issues, social issues. I don't think Silas could have would have been able to handle it the way the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan have handled it and still going to handle it until he return to Allah on the day of Yama Kiyama. DB? Uh, Brother Leon, what do you think? Yeah, if, if Minister Malcolm, Dr. Khaled, Silas Muhammad, if these guys were all, well, if these two were still alive and this guy, were they were all together, how would that affect Black folk and also just the world period today. Let, let me say something. See, and I often thought about that. My girl asked me about that last night. It seems that, that you and Brother Fred and the listeners are listening to, 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 to your question to me. My girl said to me, What would it be like? I said, Baby, first of all, Malcolm would be out there with them kids every day. He would be hand on with this hip hop world like the minister is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Solid can reach these kids like Mal- Malcolm was here today. And 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 and, and, and I think that Dr. King would be able to reach these kids to an extent better than Silas, because Silas to me 
good brother, but you don't have the personality for this hip hop culture today, in my opinion. I think Malcolm, the Minister Paracon, and and, Minister, and James Shabazz, I don't know. He probably could take care of that, 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 them Jersey kids, but national kids, I don't think James Shabazz would have it like Brother Malcolm, Dr. King, and the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in my opinion, and I'm standing on the book. Yeah, but th this is the reason why I asked for all of them together. If it was just, you know, if it was just Dr. Khaled by himself, obviously that's, that's a, a certain impl impact. But I think it's, I meant if they were all simultaneously here to this day together, how would well, that affect us? Well, it, it, they, they wouldn't be together because they have different ideology. Now, Malcolm and Farrakhan would be more together because of their relationship. Khaled, I would put Khaled more if him and if Trans 13X was here, I would put Khaled and Silas with Trans 13. I would put Minister Farrakhan, Brother Malcolm, and Dr. King together. Because of that dynamic relationship that Malcolm and them created and, and that Betty had with Carretta and, and Mary Everett. And, and I would put Mega Everett, Silas, Khaled, and Trans 13. I would put them four together if they were here. Wow. That's how, <laughs> that's how I would put it, because you got to understand, Mebrick Everett, he was not only Sarah, he was, he was a civil rights nationalist. And Dr. And Dr. Khaled was a Muslim and a, and a nationalist. And Silas is, is in the wing to guide them and advise them on the religious tip, Clan 13X would put out the lesson because he, because he got that his movement. That's why I would put them four together. In my opinion, I could be wrong, but that's how I would put it. Them four together, and I would put the other three: Malcolm and Dr. King, and the most honorable minister to assess. Because of their yeah, similar relationship, because of the wires, all their wires were together. And we said, if you got a good woman, you got, got a good man, you got a good woman to have her, and all three of those wives were close. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple of quick questions that I think you can answer quickly. So, uh, you know, in a couple of decades, once the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not with us anymore, who do you think will take the helm of the uh, nation? You know what? A lot of, a lot of, Women listen, and a lot of brothers don't think I'm crazy. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Ishmael and, and Sister Abel Muhammad and her husband in the wings as the Supreme Captain. I'm going to pick, as, as, a, as a minister, I'm going to pick Ishmael Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Sister Donetta's son, and I'm going to pick Sister Abel to advise him and be the lawyer, and I'm going to pick her husband as the Supreme Captain. And I'm gonna pick Mustafa as his son, as the sister to Ismail, Ismail, brother Ismail Muhammad. That's I don't think I many people would disagree out. with that. Huh? Why do you think? I don't think many people would disagree with that. Why would you think people would disagree well, with that? Well, I'm saying a lot of brothers, not the sisters, gonna agree with me, but a lot of brothers ain't, ain't gonna agree with me as as putting Sister Ava. At, as the top, as a advisor, as a lawyer, and a minister. A lot of people ain't going to agree with me. A lot of brothers ain't going to agree with me on that. But I know the sisters are going to agree with me. Hmm. Guys, uh, okay. know, I'm sorry. In, in the streets, we consider you an OG, one of the wiser brothers. So uh, who do our OGs and our wiser elders listen to for wisdom, for motivation, and inspiration right now? Well, I mean, you got a, a a lot of brothers in the streets that you got a lot of old timers. Like you got a lot of brothers I know from different walks of life. They reach out to Mike Tyson's father-in-law, Imam Shamsuddin Ali, 
He's a good brother, and you got a and, 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 and you got a lot of brothers. You know, reach out to Dr. Cornell West, who another old timer. You you, you got a, a, a you got a, a, a lot of brothers, and, and you know I'm gonna give the old preacher down there in Texas credit. A, a lot of young brothers and sisters go to him for advice. Open all of them go to the, the, the Bishop Jackson. You know you know a lot of things he say I don't agree with, uh, but I give him his just due. I got. Why didn't uh, Farrakhan? I mean, not excuse. I apologize. Uh, e Elijah Muhammad, um, in the same vein of picking the next leader. Why do you think he chose his son Elijah Muhammad and didn't choose Farrakhan? First of all, his son. First of all, he didn't pick his son. Okay, his son was voted in. Got that. Farrakhan had the New York swing. But Farrakhan didn't have the national swing. Farrakhan was on the ballot. Jeremiah didn't want it because we know the change was coming. Double D said, "Well, if I get it, I'm cleaning this thing up." There was so much corruption. You had brothers going to jail for bank robbery. You had brothers extorting. I mean, you had a lot going on within the ranks, and you had a lot of pettiness in the ranks. So the Imam was voted in. He wouldn't give it to him. He was voted in. Farrakhan got some votes, and he'd tell you that himself. But but the imam, a lot of people wanted the change to come, and the imam, they know that he was going to take us to the sunnah of the prophet, may peace be upon Prophet Muhammad, and may Allah grant him paradise. I mean, with the heart of Allah, Muhammad, Allah, Allah, Allah. And that's where that comes from. It was never no pick. It was a vote. Okay, thank He was you. voted in. The imam walked in Muhammad. Thank you. And tell me about this. Uh, Malcolm X was suspended for 90 days for saying the chickens have come home to roost. My question is, why? I'm telling you, that was all bullshit. That's what it was. Excuse me, excuse me language to pray, Bobby Shop. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, you could. Go ahead. You said it's bullshit. First of all, that was that was an excuse to get him out of there. That was the excuse because they looked at the excuse. First of all, let me say something to you. And that's why I'm hard on you to show. That's why I'm hard on the captain. Now, if you don't see the memo, your captain of your eyes and ears, like something go down, you Fred's partner, DB. Fred, you DB's partner. Yeah. So you got each other's back. If something come in, don't we don't we don't want y'all to bring this person on the show, that person. Y'all gonna look at it and weigh it, like I seen your hall did, mm -hmm. and it cost him his show, but here and near. So if a letter came in, this is what you see out of his own mouth that the minister, the minister never, from my knowledge, the minister never got the memo. So if somebody stick a camera in your mouth like they do ball players today, you want to say first thing come to mind, and what you were telling the truth, chickens come home to roost. If you send a chicken out, if any, if, you, if any of your family coming down home that, that had chickens, you know the chickens go away from the barn and around dust, dark come, they coming back home. That chickens coming home to roost. And and you and you and your and your darling president sorted out the Castro, he got it back. Yeah, that's what. Uh... And the same thing, and the same thing, if you didn't give the order, you know about the order. James Chabal signed it out in 1975 with a shotgun. He got it back in 1973 with a shotgun. Come on, man. I mean, you got to tell this thing like it is. A lot of brothers are going to say I'm crazy. The cop is washed up. But I'm, I'm standing on the garage. If it means my life, I'm standing on the soon out of the prophet. Mm -hmm. May peace be upon you. You what you send out, what you get back. The scripture said, "You reap what you sow." And James Shabazz reap it, and, and and he sowed what he reap. He reap he reap what he sow. Got it, got it. Because I was going to ask, why wasn't it suspension for Elijah Junior for, for for talking about the tongue, and or uh, oh, Louis Farrakhan? He was a damn fool. Mm -hmm. That's why he died out there in Chicago, broke at, at, a few months ago at ninety at ninety two years old. Junior was crazy as hell. Junior was trying to be big. Junior didn't run nothing. Okay. If Junior would have ran something, probably would have made him the Supreme Captain. He just was a little, he just was a little captain around the mosque. He just had the title of captain. Junior was no real captain. Got it. In my opinion. Got it. So if, he, if you was that good, your father would have made you the Supreme Captain, not your brother-in-law. Mm. 
See, I'm going to tell you who was the real captain out there. And, 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 and you don't hear much much about him. He just died last year, at, 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 I think a year or two ago, at, at, at 92 years old. Captain Raymond Boyd uh, of Belinda Ali, Ali's, Ali's, Ali's father. Well, he just, he died right after Muhammad Ali. Mm. It's, it's, it's his second wife's father. Mm. And you know, I'm, I'm going to mention this. I'm going to tell y'all, I love Sonia. Sonia didn't take no shit from her. His first wife, she said, listen, I was a renegade when I married, when I put it on this food and he married me, and I ain't dressing up, I'm going to dress it how I want to dress. Mm. I love the son. The son that stood up the lives of all of us. She said, no, I ain't doing that. Mm. He can leave. I ain't doing that. Right. And and Ali loved her so he took care t- 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 he died. And uh, until she died. In two thousand five, he took care of Sonya. So so that's what it is with Junior. Junior come here tell me, y'all talking about my father cutting Junior was a damn fool, man. See, Herbert didn't talk. Herbert was getting pretty money for Ali. Herbert, Herbert Java Brothers Dollar was about that money. He was shaking the air and everybody else down. Herbert was a six dollar. Herbert was a gangster. Mm. DB, you want to get them out of here? Been a long time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So my, my final question is, uh, why is... It's it been an hour and 54 minutes. I don't care about it. Y'all my brothers. Uh, <laughs> you got to get the truth out of some kind of way. <laughs> and we got to talk about I'm your book, too. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to close out talking about my book and my Hall of Fame status. Okay, now, y'all sure. got to push this book now. Yeah. I done gave y'all a lot of wisdom, brother. Yeah, don't worry about it. We good. I got you. I, I know y'all got me, brother. I, I, I've been hearing about y'all out there. I got, y'all got a lot of good brothers out there. I like how y'all went political. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what's beautiful about it is? Me and DB get mm-hmm. along, and we on different sides of the fence. You know, he's a, he's a crip. I'm a blood. So... So it's, hey, it's, it's great that we could just as, get it together. As, you know? I'm going to tell you, as, as Ali told Dr. King, we still brothers. Yeah, I'm a Muslim, brothers. y'all crippin' brothers, but yeah. we still brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but see, see, it's a different, see, it's a different, y'all crips and blood, y'all about what's right, y'all about that food in this. Uh-huh. That's what I love about y'all. And nothing against them other brothers. You, you know, we pray a lot, they come in your own and get like y'all, stand on what is right, and they help the young ones in the community. Mm-hmm. I don't talk bad about nobody. I don't care who they with or, or, or what they are. I just just hope Allah bless them to give back and, and help some of them kids in the hood go off to school. Gotcha. DB, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, last week we had Bob Aram on and Fred told him that he should be chronicling his, his life in these stories. And, uh, you know, you have your own memoir that, that should be published. So I'm guessing that's what the book is about. But this should be an absolute bestseller if it's what I think it is. Tell it's called The Rise and Fall of the Country Boy. The Rise, Fall, and the Restoration of the Country Boy. Because I am from the country. By the way, of, of, of number 12 in North Philadelphia. I've been in these streets a long time. God have blessed me. I'm 75 and still got both of my pants. I must have did something right. God have blessed me. Allah spend a while, Allah have blessed me. You want to talk about your book now? You want to talk about your book now? Yeah, my book is called The Rise and Fall of the Country Boy, written by Dr. Susan Kahn, the country girl from, from, from Beaufort, South Carolina. You can get your book. It's on, it's, it's on sale. Get your book. Support the Hall of Famer. And, and let's make it a success. It's talking about my life story, my medicals, how I became a diabetes, obesity, how I had a couple of strokes from the diabetes. And, 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 and the, this is book one. And book two is going to be about my rise and fall in, in the nature of Islam and rise and fall in the streets. And the, and the last and final book is, is going to be teaching on, on, on diabetes and health, what, what I went through personally as a juvenile, uh, uh, juvenile obesity and, and how it can affect your heart and, and your diabetes and your eyesight as you get older. Mm. So my, my passion is for juvenile diabetes. That's my passion because I was obese. And now I'm losing a lot of weight now as I got older, but I'm 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 very in in tune to health issues like diabetes and 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 and, and going blind from the diabetes. And you can get this book on Amazon, correct? Uh, no, you know what? I don't even know, but I got a number that that you don't mind me putting out there. No, go ahead. Uh, the number is eight four three seven eight one. Nine three nine five. That's the publisher, Dr. Susan Kahn of Beaufort, South Carolina. 
and she she got it up online. And Davis, and Davis got the picture of the book, and you can get with Davis, and he can send it to you guys. You guys can post it. And Davis got it. We talked about it last night on yeah. his show. Yeah, he, he'll definitely send it. And, and my final question: Do you have access to John Ali? <laughs> I wouldn't have talked to John. I'll even brought my son from the graveyard, and I love him. Man, I want to get a. I, I want to talk to him somehow, some way. What I can do, brother Pray and brother DB, I can reach out to some people that I know that got. I know one of his nieces in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I know she got ass since him. You know, John Ali, he's around, but he's been in the closet. Mm-hmm. Since 1965, mm-hmm. he's been in the closet, in the closet, in the closet, because you know a lot of brothers that support Big Red are not too pleased with him. Sure. And uh, uh, but I know some people that can get them. I wouldn't want to talk to them. You and Brother D, you can talk to. Them. I wouldn't talk to him. As I said, we brought my son from the graveyard. Yeah, I would love to talk to him. Would love um, to talk. But I'll get, I'm on it. Okay. And I'll... once I get the contact, I reach out. To, to Brother Davis, that's my go-to guy. Whatever you guys need me to do, man, just uh, call the Davis. I'm willing to help, man. Uh, thank you. I, I, and I'm glad. What I'm glad that that y'all on both sides of the fence and y'all working together. That show that we can work together. <laughs> yeah, we can for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I want y'all to keep y'all keep spreading that message to them kids out there. That's with, with y'all on each side. And, and, and I, I be telling you kids all the time out I, I, I here, the ones that I know in Newark, just you fools got to work together, man. Uh-huh. Right. And so that's what we got to do as a people. We got to work together. Everybody, before I go, everybody work together. Every ethnic uh-huh. background work together but us. Uh-huh. You know how the poor with the stick together. They ain't got to know each other. They're going to go to war with each other. Yeah. They're going to go, they're gonna go, they're gonna go to war for each other. We don't do that. Right. Priest. I remembered my last question. I, I just hit me. I should have wrote it down. What yes, per, what percentage would you say, or the government, uh, the FBI, the LAP, not the LAPD, the NYPD, uh, the CIA, J. Edgar Hoover, and the Nation of Islam, what percentages would you say led to the assassination of Malcolm X? J. Edgar Hoover created the complex. Mm-hmm. Complex and John Ali created by giving them the information Got it. and 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 alleged that 25 carried it out. Mm-hmm. I'll say that John Ali and Diego who played the main part in because John Ali was feeding the information. Got it. And that's what I, in my opinion. Got it. Gotcha. Man, this was awesome, man. Hopefully we can have you back on, man. Hey, brother, anytime Thank I you. can. In about two Make weeks, sure I'm gonna call you again. Yeah, and I'm gonna call sure you this week. Mm-hmm. Get the rise and fall of the country, boy. The book is out. I'm standing. When you come to New York, I'm gonna take him. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at my man hotel. Andrew, he don't want to buy no books, and I give him free flight tickets. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's my man, Andrew. Thanks, thanks, brother Fred, and, and thank you, brother DB, for having me. Peace and blessing. May Allah bless y'all family. And once again, I'm glad you two brothers working together, even though y'all on different sides of the fence. Peace, as we <laughs> would say, and Abbott, I shall have a lake. I shall have a lake. I like a salam. Oh, uh, DB, you want to close us out? Yeah, man. This is a, this is phenomenal, man. We always get an opportunity to have the, these OGs and legends in the mm-hmm. game, man. And, mm-hmm. you know, who would have thought? Huh? Yeah, who would have thought? Who two regular Joe Smoes in South Central. <laughs> you know, get these, get well, these, I'm the uh, regular one. I'm the regular one. I don't know. I don't know. You got so many <laughs> damn layers to you, man. It's insane. You know what I mean? I'm just a cordial dude, man. But but this goes to show you, man, that that like like, like you know you you were born as 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 you as you told us you were born in the Nation of Islam, and I was yeah. raised under the teachings of Malcolm X. So it, it goes to show you, man, that that. Uh, we could work together, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And like I was asking, I was asking if, uh, you know, if, if Minister Malcolm, if, uh, yeah. Brother Khaled, you yeah. know, uh, Silas, I wasn't saying that these guys were all necessarily working together, but if they were all, if they were all connected in a way, you know, oh, if they were still, these two are still alive, but if Brother Silas was still working closely mm-hmm. with, with the ministers in the, in the NOI, um, 
you know, how would that affect me? Because these are like, I mean, these are really powerful people, you know, and influential. And he's right. Silas does not have the necessarily have the personality to connect with with the youth the way that um, the way that Dr. Khaled connected with with Tupac or the way that, uh, you know, Farrakhan was, was able to connect with Nipsey. You know what I mean? That, that type of thing. But uh, just having that sort of influence and having the inspiration by seeing these other dudes work with work with the youth. Um, man, it would, it would just change things, you know, and, and I don't even know the, the magnitude, but I just know it will be something that's crazy for us. But man, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just thankful to have these conversations with these dudes. You know, uh, I don't necessarily agree with all of the things that, that the brother said, you know, um, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity of having the conversations with them, you know, cause this, like you said before, you said this a couple of weeks ago. This stuff is going to be documented. Yeah. And it's going to be here forever. Yeah. The same way we going back and, and, and listening to Khalid Muhammad's interviews and Malcolm X interviews, Elijah Muhammad, young Louis Farrakhan, people going, when we're long and gone, people going like, man, I'm so happy they did these interviews. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and, and we got the free range to do it. You know, they can't fire us. Like, you know what I mean? We can do what we want. That's right. You know, and that's important. So, man, let's get out of here, man. I'm about to go to Lamert Park, man, and 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 just walk through and and, and get some ancestor love, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm gonna go soak up some of this sunshine too, bro, bro. So I'll catch you back uh, in in a little bit, man. All See right. y'all tonight, like every Sunday through Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Catch y'all right back at the barbershop. All right, love you, man. Thank you, man. Love you, man. Peace. Right, peace. And that'll do it, man. I'll see y'all nine. Oh, well, this is private. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs>